Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Dave. I'm a licensed podiatrist. I'd like to thank you for watching my video on my Frugal Foot YouTube channel. If you enjoyed these videos, please hit that subscribe button. If you watched this video and you learned something, well, please give it a thumbs up. All right, in this video, I'd like to go over how I go about selecting the appropriate arch support for a patient. Now, why would I select an arch support for a patient? Well, I believe that the foot functions best when it's run through its normal range of motion. And occasionally, pathology will occur because the foot is being overused by poor biomechanics. Sometimes the arch is going down more than it should, or sometimes the arch does not come all the way back up when it should. And so an arch support is then appropriate. But you need to pick the right one. And so these are the four factors that I look at when I try to select the appropriate arch support. The first is going to be the height of the patient's arch. Now, patients oftentimes come in the office and they ask me, doctor, do I have a flat foot? Well, that's like asking me, when does a hill become a mountain? Because there is no official measurement. You see, we don't have a model of the normal foot okay, where if your arch is lower than that, then you have a flat foot, or if your arch is higher than that, you have a high arch. And so I'm really not concerned with how flat the foot is or how high the arch is. What I want to know is how high is the patient's arch on the floor? How high can it go? That's what I really need to know. You see, the patient might go out with me on the sidewalk and walk through the sprinkler and then look back and go, look it, my arch is higher than yours. Great but that doesn't tell me how high the arch is. The second contributing factor is going to be the demand on the foot. And what I mean by that is, what is the foot going to have to handle in terms of load? So, for example, the first thing I need to look at is the patient's weight. And weight can be measured on a scale, so that is very helpful. Obviously, the more the patient weighs, the, the stronger the support is going to need to be. The second thing that I need to look at is going to be the flexibility of the foot. Now, flexibility is really determined by genetics and, and the patient's anatomy, and everybody's a little bit different. And it's very difficult to measure flexibility because there is no, there is no scale for that. Then we also have external factors, such as does the patient run, or are they just going to walk? Do they work at Home Depot, where they're always on concrete floors, or do they work over at the local golf course as a golf pro or as a caddy? So the third factor is going to be the actual height of the arch support. I want the arch support to match the height of my patient's arch as close as possible. This is very difficult now when you deal with over-the-counter arch supports because the companies that build these arch supports, their job is to stay in business. And if they make their arch supports with a high arch, well, what's going to happen? The people that have a low arch are not going to be able to wear them. So the majority of the arch supports that you'll see that are over the counter are going to be fairly flat. Now, there are arch supports that you can actually mold yourself, and we're going to talk about some of those in upcoming videos. Now, the fourth contributing factor is going to be the flexibility of the arch support. And this is just as important as the shape of the arch support. And I'll show you why. Let's suppose that I, that I select an arch support for a patient, and if it just so happens, by sheer luck, it fits the patient's arch perfectly, but it's made out of concrete. Well, my patient is liable to throw this arch support on me, at me because what happens when they stand on it? It doesn't budge. It's hard as a rock, and they can't absorb shock, so that's not going to work. So instead of selecting one made out of concrete, we're going to select one that's made out of whipped cream. Well, what's going to happen when they step on that? It's going to crush, and that's not going to work either. But somewhere in the middle is the right amount of flexibility so that when the patient stands on it, it compresses enough for them to absorb shock, but it doesn't go down so far that they have their foot problem. And of course, it'd be wonderful if you could find an arch support that has memory so that it raises the arch all the way back up when they leave the ground, which puts them right back at the starting point for the next time they strike the ground. All right, so those are the four factors that I take into consideration when I'm trying to select the right arch support for my patient. I find that it works very, very well for me, so I wanted to share it with you. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. I'm Dr. Dave, and I'll see you on the next video.